Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm James and I'm continuing on with this Balsa USA Smoothie 40 kit build. So in this video, what I need to do is bring the back portion or the back half of the fuselage together. And as part of that step or as part of that process, I need to locate and install the outer tubing for the control rods. All right, so the reason I have to do this now is because once the fuselage is sort of all enclosed, it would be pretty difficult to do it. So this is the time to do it. I just feel it sort of early on, early on in the fuselage build, so I'm kind of realizing that I have to do a little bit of guesswork here and hope it turns out okay, which I, which I think it will, will be fine. So one thing to note is that the fuselage has this sort of this bulkhead here, then it has this last one which goes back in here. And then in between the two, there are no bulkheads. It's just an open area. And one thing I have to do is put in these sort of cross braces, which are going to be 3 16 inch square um, balsa material. And those cross braces are going to go on the top and the bottom on, on, on right here and right here. Now, there's nothing, as I mentioned, there's no, there's no bulkheads in between here. So it's a pretty far run from here to basically in here with your, with the, control rod which is flexible so to prevent sort of too much um, flexing of the control rod the instructions want you to put in some stock 1 8 inch balsa sheeting kind of in this location and in this location drill it out and just to use those to sort of secure the control rods in so that's going to be included in this step so the plan has shows this control horn which I highlighted here in yellow it's kind of big and they give you this one, which is a little bit smaller, which is okay. And I'm gonna use that as the basis of my, kind of where the slot's gonna go in, where I'm gonna put the slot, which is gonna be right back, right back in here. And it's gonna be the same location on both sides. The rudder is gonna be on the other side, but I'm gonna put them at the same, about the same location. So I'm gonna measure probably about midway, where's my ruler? I'll measure about midway down from the top of the fuselage which is gonna be the top of the elevator actually in this location. And kind of try to get to about the midpoint of the, of the control horn, and that'll be the sort of the starting point. And I can adjust the control, the location later, but kind of shooting for that midpoint is a good place to start, which looks like it's about a half inch, maybe five eighths of an inch from the top. And I'll just kind of use that as the guideline to kind of bring this through until I get all the way over to where I'm gonna be putting the servo which is going to be right about here and then we'll install the servos later and the mounting rails for those but this is just basically going to be to help me line it up so I'm going to put the servo there and I'll just go ahead and I'll locate when I put these other pieces in here I'm basically just going to drill you know where that where I can put the control horns I mean I'm sorry the control rods through on both of these pieces so it's kind of a funky step and yeah, anyhow, I guess we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the control rod I'm going to be using is this Sullivan, and it's called Golden Rod, obviously. And it's their number 506, blue and gold. And I think it says, yeah, two, 256 size. That's basically the thread size, I believe, of the hardware, of the clevises and the little, sort of like the little threaded studs that go between the clevis and the control rod itself. So the control rod is actually the yellow piece. And then the blue is the outer tubing that that yellow piece slides in. So it's only the outer tubing that I'm going to worry about right now. I'm going to pull this out of here and just use that as the basis. So I'm actually, it's actually going to be installed in this step. So it'll be in the it'll be in the fuselage from here on out. So I'm going to pull this out of here and we'll get we'll get going on it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cut one of my control horns off of here. I don't want to lose it. Put that guy right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this right about there. And then, as you can see on the, on the fuselage, the elevator is going to go right in here, or the, the vertical, the horizontal stabilizer is going to go right in here. So I'm going to measure from there down to about, right about there. So I, I see that I'm, with this control horn, it looks like I'm about half of an inch below below this point 
to like the mid area of the control horn. So that's kind of a good place to start. So I have plenty of room to kind of make adjustments. So the control that the outer tubing is going to come out right about here. And then this tubing up is, you know, it's flexible. So if it has a little bit of a bend in it to kind of reach whatever point I want to connect it to, it'll, it'll be fine. So I think that's a good place to sort of use as a basis for my slot, which is going to be about, like I just said, about a half inch right about there. So, and then this location is, of course, where the bulkhead is. So this guy's going to go up in here like this. And this goes up here. This, this bulkhead is, base, is flush with the top back here, which means it's going to be flush with the top of the elevator. So I'm just going to move that right here. And I think right about here is going to be sort of the points where I'm going to be drilling it out for the, for the tubing. We'll check it. We'll check it later, but that's about in line. Okay. And then, of course, when you look on here, I have my lines drawn from when I marked out the location of that bulkhead, which is basically going to go right about here. That's about how thick it is, as you can see right there. So I think if I just kind of go somewhere, like right about here, I'm just going to eyeball it. Right about there. That's going to be kind of the area where I'm going to do my initial slot cut. And then I can make adjustments from there. But I'm going to start small. I'm going to put kind of a small slot in there. And then we'll see how it lines up as we build it. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to take the little bulkhead that I put my little dots on. And I'm going to stick them. I'm going to stick it in the fuselage. And I'm going to tape it in place just so I have it so I can kind of use it as a guide as I cut my slot. So I'm going to tape this like this. All right, so I don't have more than two hands. I wish I had three hands sometimes. But I'm just going to do this. Let me get this taped in here. All right, so I got this kind of lined up in there. So you can kind of see in here that the dot, obviously it's kind of about a half inch below here. So now let me go ahead and I guess I'll work upside down and we'll get the tubing out and we'll measure that and then we'll kind of construct our slot. And I'll come back and everything will be glued once I get this thing sort of started. Let's pull one, one of these out of here. Give you a pretty long piece in here. Alternative to using this is to use just sort of, you can use I guess maybe like hardwood stock, like quarter inch or something like that with the wire at the end. And there's a way of doing that also. And that's a very common way. I don't have hardwood and I'm not going to do that on this build. But check that out on YouTube. You can check out different ways to do control rods. Also, there's carbon fiber. There's, there's all kinds of, well, there's several methods, I should say, to kind of constructing and using control rods. Okay, so here's our, our piece. Now let me see how, I'm gonna use a caliper. See how, All right, this is 3 16th of an inch diameter. So it'll cross like this, it'll go, this will be the elevator and then the servo for the elevator will be on this side and then the opposite for the rudder. And that kind of gives you a straight shot instead of trying to make a bend like, you know, kind of going like, like this. You know, if you had your elevator over here, the control horn on the elevator here, and the servo for the elevator over here, you'd kind of be doing something more like that, which, which would probably work okay also, but it, I like going cross and crossing it like that, have a straight shot. I think that's kind of a common way, common way to do it. Okay, so when I, when I do a rough sort of eyeball in it here, when I look down on my marks, so I got the control rod is going to kind of go in like this, like that. I can see that the little slot that I sort of drew out with my little marks on, on the fuselage here, it's probably going to be too far this way. So I'm going to go ahead and start the slot back probably about a half inch or so. 
So instead of doing it right, right here, kind of like the way I, the way I initially drew it, I'm probably going to start it like back here a little bit more. Okay, so I can cut this slot a few different ways. I can use my Exacto blade. I can also drill it out with my roto tool. That's probably the two main ways I would be doing it. And it gets a little cumbersome with the with the Exacto, but I can do it. And but I'm going to do it with my with the roto tool just because I can kind of like kind of route it out with the drill bit because this is soft wood. So I'm going to get that out and we'll go we'll try it like that. Probably too skinny still, but it'll go right about there. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and continue with this. I'll just use this drill bit as sort of a router and kind of widen this thing out. All right, so what we can see is that obviously the slots, the, the width I need, but because it's so short that the control rod tubing is coming in obviously at a too high of an angle to sort of catch, it doesn't make sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and lengthen out the slot. And I can see from my, the way I was looking at it that I'm gonna just have to extend it this way and not, not that way. So I'm gonna drill a couple more holes and go from there. All right, so this is getting closer, but I'm going to go ahead and work on it a little bit and kind of get it in the right location. I am going to be using the X-Acto blade also to sort of get it, kind of get it fine-tuned. So I think it's actually looking pretty close. I can kind of put this in here like this, and you can kind of see that I'm getting close to my little, my little blue dot in there. Oops, a little blue dot. It's like right, right in there. And I'm getting close to that as I bring it in. So I can go ahead and up, just continue to extend it a little bit and I'll continue to work with it until I get it in the right location. Now you can see I'm taking the sandpaper and I got a small little tube of sandpaper and I'm trying to sort of sand out sort of a little sort of channel on this side going into it and also a channel on the inside kind of coming out of it and that kind of helps get that get that angle to work the slot turned out being a lot longer than I thought it was going to be but that's okay all right so I think I got it pretty good I can kind of put this in here like this and it's close to that little dot I drew. And that dot wasn't, you know, necessarily perfect anyhow. That'll go like that. And then it's going to be cut off right here and then it'll engage the, the control horn back back here with the with the yellow control rod. Okay. So I think that's pretty good just like that. And then I think I can go ahead and drill drill the hole out in that little bulkhead there. All right, so I wanna do about the same thing on, on the other side. And I kinda of wanna get it in the right location or the same location. So I'm gonna kinda of take this little pointy thing, which is an owl, A-W-L, I'm sorry, yeah, owl. It sounds like owl, the bird, but it's an owl. And it's used, basically has a very pointy tip on it. 
and it's like a screwdriver and I'm gonna go ahead and push this right about here and I want to be careful because this may, may not always be the best way to do this because I don't want to crack the balsa but this is pretty soft so I think I can get it through here and do the same thing on this side and I got my hole there and a hole there here and here okay so I can just use that now as my guide for my other slot let's see here right about there Boop. all right so I do want to point out that you know as I'm doing this I'm just building my kit and I'm just grabbing tools that I have on hand and using them kind of as I'm doing it I'm not um, trying to claim here that I'm doing some kind of special way or some kind of expert way or this is the only way to do this there's several ways to do this kind of stuff and you just got to kind of work on it and figure out the best way for for you to build I never want to come across as trying to say that I'm an expert or that you can't do things different ways so this is just the way I'm doing this right now next time I'll probably do it a little bit different so it's just depends on kind of what I'm doing and what I have around me to use and that's how I that's how I build so anyhow probably a lot of people out there cringing watching me do that saying why don't you just use an exacto blade dude obviously exacto blade is very useful i don't know sometimes it's fun to use a rotor tool sometimes it thinks that it, you think that it's going to make things a lot easier sometimes it makes it worse but not sure but anyhow forgive me for that if you thought that was really funky to be kind of routing this out with a drill bit so this one's good here Hopefully you can kind of see that it's kind of in that spot. So I'm going to go ahead and take this guy out and we're going to drill that out and then just kind of feed this through, kind of see where it goes. And then I'm going to glue this in and then I'll work on these other two little sort of supports and we'll go from there. Since this is plywood, it's going to be harder to drill through. I'm going to go ahead and just get a 3 16th inch regular wood drill bit and use my power drill to drill the holes. I'm going to make a little kind of starter pilot for that. Here we go. these guys may be a little bit smaller than the actual tubing let's see here yeah got to be super careful I don't want this thing flying out of my hands or getting caught Thought I had a 3 16th inch drill bit. I guess that wasn't. All right, there it goes. That'll work. Okay, let's see if this, how it works here. I think this is the side. Put this, pop it back in. I'll take this guy in here. goes like that let's take this guy over here Ooh, all right okay so these are going to go through I think obviously I'm going to glue this in but these guys are going to go all the way to here like that get on there oops like that okay cool 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and glue this one in right now, and then I'll work on these other kind of braces, and we'll do the we'll do the next few steps. But yeah, so this is basically how it's going to work. Kind of see it crosses over, and it has more of a straight shot when you do it that way. So let's go ahead and glue this piece right here in, the CA. Careful not to move it. Now my lines aren't perfect that I drew. I thought they were, you know, I think they were good when I drew them onto the, when I transferred them from the plans. But, you know, as mentioned before, wood has a little bit of, sometimes can be a little off. And some of the wood in this kit has been a little bit, some of it's been a little bit warped here and there. As I mentioned, I had to put these bulkheads under, under weights for a while, so things are good. They're just not perfect. And as I've done before, as I'll go back and I'll put some thick CA, especially when I'm doing the kind of plywood to balsa, I like adding the thick CA for sure. Something about the Ply, well, the plywood is harder, and it doesn't soak in as, as good as the as the balsa. So I think sometimes it's good to have that extra little bit of bond with a thicker CA to kind of get in there and kind of get up against that joint. So the next step is I'm going to go ahead and cut these cross braces that are going to go here, here, and here, and here on the bottom. And I'm going to be using the plan right here as the guide. To, you, to make the correct lengths. And then I'm also going to cut at the same time, I'll cut two pieces out of my stock, or out of my, out of my scrap sheeting, same length. So I'll do the same length here as I do here and here, and also do it in the back over here. So I have my two little sets of pieces that I just cut. Now these pieces here aren't, don't need to be exact. These are not structural. These do not add, I mean, they will add strength to the fuselage, but they're not designed for that. These are just designed to sort of like hold the control rod tubing in place. So these don't have to be in here in any perfect way. I'll try to get them as lined up as I can, but these aren't, it's not essential that these are, that these are perfect. Now then these guys, these cross braces, they're gonna go, like I mentioned before, there's gonna be a set here and a set here. And what happens is they're actually cut so that they kind of bow 
out the fuselage a little bit so the fuselage has instead of like right now if you were to look at this if you could pick it up you probably can on the camera it pretty much just goes straight down to this back piece back here but by putting these guys in they're actually a little bit per plan they're actually a little bit wider than you can than you can see like right here and what that's going to do is that's going to kind of push this push the fuselage kind of widen it up a little bit which is going to give it sort of a little curve so that's sort of like a finishing kind of element there so yeah that's the way that's going to so when you see me kind of pushing this in here and forcing it in that's why that's going to be doing that just to kind of give it that bow i want to i want to be careful here because as i'm i am doing that it is going to be widen this thing like i mentioned it's going to be kind of prying it open a little bit so i'm going to put some a couple clamps back here just to kind of keep that i'll just put actually i can probably just use one i'll just put it right here in the middle just to sort of keep this nice and stiff well this this is this is probably cured up but i just don't want to take a chance we'll leave it like that for a while and we'll put these braces in All right, so let's get these guys in here. This one will go on top here. Okay, like that. So hopefully you can kind of see that in there. It's kind of weird, kind of a weird little step here. Like I said, I'm not sure why they just didn't put some bulkheads or formers in these locations. All right, time for some CA. All right, so I have these cross braces set, and now I can go ahead and put these little, these guys are gonna, gonna kinda go like right near them. And again, these are for the control rods. Let's see if I can get it to fit in here. That one I can just kinda put like that in there. And then I'll bring in the control rod. Let me feed these through here and then we'll see where they end up. There. All right, I think it was getting a little bit difficult to see. So I think at this point right here, I can kind of go, I can kind of put these guys together like this, and I can kind of make like a vertical slot in this little, this little plate. So I'll go ahead and I'll mark that and I'll slot that out and then we'll go ahead and keep bringing these through and we'll go to the next one and then we'll be done. All right, so I have my little slot cut in that little piece of wood and I'll bring it on here. I'll just feed this through here like that. Hopefully you can kind of see that in there. I don't have the best light in there, do I? All right. So now I can kind of feed these guys through here. Like that. Oops. Hopefully you can kind of see that. And then we'll go ahead and move on to this one over here. We'll mark the location on that one. Boy, it's getting kind of cumbersome with all this stuff sticking out of here. Right, this one I'll just pop in here. This one sort of fits in between the between the cross braces. 
right about there. Somewhere right around there. Oops. All right, so I'm going to mark those. I'm pressing up against them. I'm going to mark them right about there. Okay. So now I'll just go ahead and I'll cut out two little holes or slots for that one. So I took a little break and I come back now to go ahead and put this little this little piece in here. And let's see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this just like this in there. And then I'll just fish these these last two through here. Kind of pull them through here. Like this. Okay, like that. And now, I guess I'll pull them all the way through. I'll have to get this whole thing kind of set up. And you know, these are long enough, obviously, that I can trim them later. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of set them, kind of pull them through here. Somewhere to about here. I know I'm gonna be trimming these anyhow, but I'll pull them through like about to there. Got plenty of room to work. All right, so that's basically how it's gonna look inside here. One thing I need to do though is I need to pull these out and I need to rough them up with some sandpaper because this is kind of slick and the plastic is slick and I'm gonna use five minute epoxy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rough up these points so that it glues better to the, to the wood. So I'll do that right now. Let me go ahead and pull these back out and we'll stick them back in after I sand them off. Since I have these out, I thought I'd just go ahead and glue it in, glue these little guys in right now. And then I'll come back and I'll epoxy the, the rods in, or I should say the tubing for the rods. I'll just put some CA on this. All right. And this one I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna bring this up a little bit higher and put it right up against this little cross brace. Gives it something a little bit more to hang on to. All right, so those are good, my little my little retainers or whatever you want to call these things. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and feed. I'll feed these guys back through here. Now I marked them in a couple locations, but I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna cut them, cut them a little bit now. I mean, cut this long piece off because I don't need that. So I'm gonna cut these guys right now and then I'll feed them through and then we can trim them a little bit later.
All right, so this should be pretty good here. And so the servo is going to be sitting upright like this, and it's going to be sitting in here somewhere. And of course, I'll be cutting these, I'll be cutting these tubing, this outer tube back to probably somewhere like right in here somewhere. And then the servo, of course, will then engage the control rod through here. So, so I have room to work. And then the last thing I'll do is once I get everything set up and in the right location, I'll come back and I'll make a little brace for like right here also to kind of, to kind of hold it, to hold these two tubes in this location also, kind of like what I did here. I'll do something like that there, but I want to get the servos need to be set up first and everything needs to be in the right location before I do that last one. So for this, I'm just going to go ahead and use my five minute epoxy and put it in, put it on these locations and then we'll let it set up and then we'll be done with this for now. I'll probably come back and trim this. I don't know if I'll do it now or not, but I'll just leave this kind of, these guys kind of sitting out here. They're not in the way for right now, so they're okay. So these little, these little slots here are a little bit kind of sloppy and just so I can kind of get things to kind of stay in one position as I let the epoxy cure up, I, I made these little couple little balsa shims here sort of stick in here. It's kind of jam them. Oops, dropped it. Dropped it in there just to kind of press it up against the piece here to kind of keep it straight and again this isn't going to be seen but these will sort of looks kind of funky but I put these little guys in there if you can kind of see them and that'll just be there to kind of hold this in place while I put a blob of this on here kind of messy inside here but it won't be seen. Okay, so again, it took a little bit longer than I thought it would take to kind of get these control rods in here, so I didn't make it to the turtle deck area, but we'll do that in the next video. But you can kind of see, so here's the little bulkhead we put in earlier, and then here are the little cross braces, and of course the little pieces that we put in to hold the control rods. You kind of make out those little shims I made just kind of hold it in place. The epoxy is going to hold it really well. The only thing that's going to get these control rods out of here now would be sort of like a catastrophic crash, but let's hope that doesn't happen. And then of course they come all the way to the front here where I can trim them back later. And then what I'll do on this side is I'll trim this down also. So these aren't going to be sticking out at all. It's just going to be a small little exit hole right there once it's all finished. So I think I'll call it here for this video. Call it good. Took longer than I thought, like I mentioned. So next time we're going to get to this turtle deck area and probably some of the bottom sheeting and put in a little block, I think, back in here. And we'll keep moving along with the fuselage. So all right, so thanks for watching my channel. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. <music>